Hello everyone, and welcome to the 26th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can use key value coding in Objective-C. So key value coding, or KVC as it's generally referred to as, is basically a generic way that we can set or get different values, usually in a class structure. So uh, what I'm going to kind of do is just explain the class that we have set up and then I'm just going to go really through how key value coding works. So let's just go ahead and check out the person class that I've created for this tutorial and just go ahead and create this class as you're watching this video. And this is nothing new. Uh, we just have an NS string of name. We also have an integer called age. And again, the name is, or the class name is just person. And then we also have properties for both of these values. One is to just copy the NS string value and then the other is the integer of age. So with that said, um, now we can also check out the implementation, and the implementation is pretty simple as well. We just simple sim synthesize um, both of those properties so that we can have setters and getters, and then we also have our init method which will set these values to default values, and of course we have to release our name object because it's an object in a class, and that's where uh, we have to release the memory for it is in dialloc. So anyway, that's um, all basically review of what we've learned so far. So let's, uh, once you've written up your person class, feel free to take some time to do that. Once you've got that all set up, go back to your main.m, make sure you import person.h, and let's begin. So let's go ahead and create a new person object, and I'll just call it um, me for this tutorial. And we'll just allocate a new person to our me object. So now, key value coding, there's tons more than what I'm going to show you in this tutorial, simply for time and other reasons. But basically, uh, this is just kind of scratching the surface. And if you're working with Coco, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to know a lot about uh, key value coding because it's a huge reoccurring concept that goes throughout all of Coco. So if you're in the Coco tutorials, definitely watch all this video. So um, with that said, we have our person object called me. And key value coding, like I said before, is a generic way that we can set any value in uh, classes, really. So if we want to uh, set something, we can use the key value coding set value and I can't type, set value for key. So set value for key is essentially a way that we can set some value to some key, and I'll explain both of these in a second, but a key is essentially the property or the instance variable name that we have in the class. So what key value coding will do is check the properties first to see if there's any um, method or any, since we synthesize all those uh, property methods, it's going to look for a method that it can call to set these values. So, for example, if we want to, uh, in our person class, we have an NS string of name. So, if we want to set the value of our name, we can say set value. We'll set the value to something other than Yoda, which is our default. So, we'll set it to Samwise for this example. And the key is just an NS string of the method that we're going to essentially call. And this is really the property, not the method itself. So since our property here that we're working with is called name, that's what our key is going to be in key value coding. So for key, we're just going to pass in name. So what this really sets up is now we're setting our NS string value to our property, or we're using our property to set it. So set value for key will look for the property that, or the more specifically the method that it can call though, associated with the property and then when it finds basically set name to set the name of our value in our person, it will um, use the Samwise value that we have here in our set value parameter. So again, set value for key is just looking for the property associated with an instance variable or looking for the instance variable directly if it can't find a property, and then it will just set the value of Samwise or whatever value we pass in. So now we can also ns log this if we want. We can say percent at, and we can use another method of key value coding, which is value for key. And as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically, we pass in the key, which again is just the property name, 
and it will search for the value or get the value using um, you know the accessors that we have in our person class and it will return the value associated with this key so our key value or our name in our person class is still the name so it will just re return the value of our name and this is all set up correctly uh, we're using percent app because we're returning an ID from value for key and essentially what it's going to return is just that NS string for our key called name so if we can go ahead and run this and you can see that it returns a value of Samwise. So this is pretty cool, where we don't even have to really know what the method names are for anything that we're trying to set. We just have to know kind of the properties, so we can say we're going to set and some value to this um, object, uh, and we're just going to use this key, which essentially is the property name, or if it can't find the property name, it will become the object name or the instance variable itself. And then it will just set this uh, Samwise value that we're using here to that key or the value. So essentially, that's really uh, the gist of key value coding is you're just looking for the property or the name of your instance variable, but preferably the property. And you're using that as the key that you're going to be setting the value uh, to. So now, what we can also do is uh, something even more interesting in key value coding, which is the fact that we can even use this with primitive types. So we have our integer of age in our person class, but uh, let me just retype our set value here, and you'll see set value for key. Set value, the parameter for that, is an ID. And if you remember back to the previous tutorials, ID is an object pointer. So what that means is it can only take in an object, so we can't really pass in any primitive types for this. So that seems like a problem for us because, of course, we want to set our integer of an age, and we're using uh, primitive types in our class, but set value only allows us to use objects. But we can get away with this by using our NS number class, and that's a special feature of key value coding, is that it will... Uh, if you pass in an NS number to set an integer or any primitive type, it can auto unbox, or it will. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but it will basically take the number from our NS number class and convert it into the proper type. So if I want to uh, create an NS number here with a value of 10, and our key for this is going to be our age property because that's the property associated with our age. As you can see right here, we have the property called age, and so um, that's all we have to do to set the value for that key. So if we want to uh, return the value of our um, our age as well, we just have to use me value for key, and that will return an NS number of our integer value. So this is um, kind of a cool thing about key value coding is that even though you're trying to set a primitive type, if you use the NS number class, key value coding can automatically uh, unbox basically that value. So we're passing in an NS number here, but when it goes to set this value, it will realize that it's trying to set this to an integer. So what it will do is basically call the method of the NS number class to convert the NS number into an integer, and then it can set the value of our age uh, like that. So again, we're using our property named age, and that's the key. And then uh, right here, we're just returning the value for key called age. And again, the interesting thing about this is that value for key will only return an ID, which is an object, and basically what that means is that since it's returning an object pointer, that means that we're, we can only return an NS number in this case. We can't return the primitive type of age. So what value for key will do is essentially, um, since our integer or our age value is an integer, value for key will wrap that value, or our primitive type of age, and it will put it into an NS number. And then when it, when it returns the value, it's returning that NS number, and that's why when we go to print this out, we use percent at instead of using the uh, percent %d, which is our integer equivalent. So again, uh, this is a lot of cool stuff for key value coding, and let's just check to see how it works. So. We can go ahead and build this, and you can see that we print out a value of 10. So key value coding, the concept is really simple, but it has a lot of added features uh, that are pretty neat. 
So we can even take this a step further, and there's tons of other methods in this. I'm just showing you very few. But um, another cool method that we can use is uh, me, and we can say set values for keys with dictionary. And what this allows us to do is that you know that an NS dictionary contains objects and a key, or a key and object that associate to each other. So if we can create an NS dictionary with multiple objects and multiple keys, we can basically uh, basically set values for multiple keys, or we can set multiple values to multiple keys at the same time. So by passing an NS dictionary, uh, we don't have to call set value for key a bunch of times for every different element. We can just pass in an NS dictionary, which has all the values and all the keys that we want to set. So we can go ahead and create an NS dictionary, dictionary with objects and keys. And basically, all we want to use this for is we want to uh, set different things. So if we want to set our name, and we want to change that to something like Lucas, and I'll just put this on a new line, Lucas, and we'll set that, uh, of course, the key associated with the name is name. So we have our object or our value of Lucas, and our key to associate with that is name. And again, the keys and key value coding always associate with the properties that we're trying to use or use that to set our values. So then if we also want to set our age, or our, yes, our age, we can also um, add our NS number to this as well. Number with int, and we can say 17. And then we could just say uh, for the key, we want to use our age, because again, that's the property that we need to use to set our age value. So. Um, I mean, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, it's not too much to this. Um, we're just creating an NS dictionary with different values, different keys, and then set values for keys with dictionary. We'll basically take all the values and all the keys, and it will basically use set value for key multiple times, if you want to think of it that way. So um, it's a kind of a time saver, I guess, if you don't want to, uh, if you have multiple keys and multiple uh, values that you want to, or I should say, if you have multiple values you want to set, you don't have to call set value for key tons of time, um, multiple times. You can just use an NS dictionary to set them all in one shot. So if we wanted to return a bunch of different values, we can do this as well. So we can go ahead and create an NS dictionary, and we'll just call it dict. And we can say me, and we'll return a dictionary with values for keys. And what this will do is it will take um, all this takes in parameters for this method is an NS array, and the NS array all it contains is the keys that we want to get uh, values for. So what we can do is we can say NS array, and we can say array with objects, and the objects that we want to contain in this are simply the name, and we also have our age. And again, what this is doing is we're creating just an NS array with a bunch of um, just a bunch of keys. The dictionary with values for keys will take all these keys, and then it will create a dictionary uh, using these keys, and it will find all the values in our me object, and then of course it will create an NS dictionary out of that. So um, we can just test to see that this works in our NS log, and use percent at because it's an object and let's try to print this out. So go ahead and build and run this, and as you can see when we run this, we get age is equal to 17, which is what we set right here with our age right there and our number with a value of 17. And then we also have our name Lucas, and that was just set right here uh, with the name uh, key and our value of Lucas. So um, key value coding, it may take a little while to uh, get used to how it works, but it is actually a fairly simple, simple not simple, simple concept to uh, learn. And um, basically, it's just a generic way that we can set any value in our class, and it's extremely flexible. So um, in Coco, you'll see how this becomes much more useful uh, when we get into uh, the Coco tutorials for when we actually use key value coding in them. You'll see how key value coding is a very huge part of Coco. Um, but I'm just going to run through how we did this all one more time just so you can really wrap your brain around this. So again, key value coding, generic way to set and get different values 
just by knowing the key, and the key is the property name or the instance variable if it can't find the property name. So generally we want to have the property name that we're looking for, and in this case for our person class we had a name and an age property. So our keys are our properties that we want to use, and those will allow us to call the different methods of those properties, so our set, you know, whatever value uh, whatever our synthesize creates for our class for each value. So again, set value will take any value that we pass in as long as it's an object, and our key just has to be the property associated with the object that we're trying to change. So in this case, we're passing in an NS number, and since our key is age, it will look for the property in our person class, and we'll just set it with whatever value we pass in right here. And then, of course, value for key will return the object value for whatever property name we pass in. And then set values for keys with dictionary allows us to pass in multiple keys and multiple objects associated with those keys as well. And this just allows us to set multiple values in one method, basically. And then, of course, uh, we have the method dictionary with values for keys, which allows us to return uh, multiple values or basically a dictionary of all the values that we pass in uh, with an NS array that contains multiple keys. And since the NS array contains all the keys, of course with key value coding we can get all those values. So that's really uh, the main idea of key value coding is that all you really have to know is the property name of anything that you're trying to set and um, you can really fly with it. So as long as you know, uh, and you'll see really in Cocoa this will come together how this becomes more powerful and we'll have more tutorials on key value coding in the future. Um, but the main idea is just it's a generic way to set values without really knowing everything about the class or uh, just knowing really the property. That's all you really have to know for key value coding and that makes it really flexible. So anyway, um, more tutorials on this and many other Objective-C things will be on the way. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you don't mind, click on the odd ad while you're at it. Alright, uh, I'll see you next tutorial, and thanks for watching.